What is going on, YouTube? This is Fascinating Graveyard. I am your host, Lamont Dorsey. Please don't Google me. Today, we are at the Dewey Cemetery here in Dewey, Oklahoma. We're here to visit the grave of one Henry Starr. He is the first trans bank robber in United States history. Now, what I just said is not a lie. It's the actual truth but it's probably not what you think. Anyways, let's get on with the story, shall we? Henry Starr was born December 2nd, 1873 in the Indian territories near Fort Gibson, which would be now modern day Muskogee County. And if you know that last name Starr, it's because he's related to Sam Starr, who is the husband of Bell Starr, who uh, is pretty well known uh, with history buffs as having been uh, one of the cohorts of the James slash Younger Gang. I will be doing a video about her unsolved murder uh, in the very near future. Yes, unsolved murder. Technically, it is an unsolved murder. Anyways, so growing up, you know, Henry wanted to be a cowboy. He wanted to ride horses, lasso horses just anything to do with uh, that that kind of that kind of thing you know i don't think this guy wanted to grow up to be a scientist i don't think there were scientists back in those days anyways in 1886 uh, sadly uh, henry's dad died uh, leaving three children and a wife to fend for themselves uh, on the family farm and what do you do when you're a woman your husband just died and you got this big old farm and three kids to take care of. Well, you go ahead and you marry somebody else. So she finds a new husband, believed by the last name of Walker. I think his name was C.L. Walker. Not that that's important. I don't even know why I remember that. So she marries this Walker guy and he had no prototypical kids. When a new man comes into the household, they don't like him and he was very very abusive and he says screw this i'm out of here so he takes off and by the age of 16 he's out on his own fending for himself so he gets a job where any other kid gets a job when they don't know what they're doing so he's working on some ranch uh, maybe the ranch is somewhere out here who the hell knows so he's working as a ranch hand and it wouldn't take long for Henry to get arrested and become known to law enforcement as that dude, that dude. So he's riding a horse down this uh, road going into town. And I guess he gets pulled over. I don't know how people were pulled over by you know those days. But whoever was doing the pulling over, they stop his horse and cart... And he has a couple of barrels in the cart under the canopy. And they're like, well, what's this? What's in the barrels? He's like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so they get an ax and then they just crack the barrel. And, you know, some liquid starts coming out. And one of the guys tastes his fingers. He's like, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that was uh, whiskey. <laughs> he's like, what do you know about this whiskey, uh, Mr. Star? And he's like, man, really? Dang, I don't even know. This ain't even a mine. I'm just, you know, taking this for somebody. I don't, I don't know anything. So he's arrested and thrown in jail. And he's slapped on the wrist. Probably a tiny fine. What was it, 50 cents back in those days? Who knows? Now, he would keep his nose clean for a couple of years until in 1891, he gets arrested. This time, he stole somebody's horse. Again, he denied it. He's an innocent man right he didn't do anything wrong by the way don't ask me why i'm wearing my hat like the fresh prince of bel-air anyways so this guy gets arrested he's sitting in jail so his cousin comes to bail him out gets him out of jail they're walking down the road and they go home and henry is thinking maybe about his life about what he should do with it now if you're getting arrested maybe jail serves as a deterrent for certain people to where you don't want to go to jail you don't want to commit crimes so you kind of turn your life around and you become a upstanding citizen but uh, not henry Starr. uh no 
uh, he makes it a point then and there that he, for some unknown reason, is not going to return uh, to show up for court to answer to the charges of the horse theft. Uh, he decides that he's going to go all out and say, you know what, not only am I not showing up to court, but uh, I'm going to just start this life of crime. So he hooks up with these two guys, Jesse Jackson and Ed Newcomb, and they decide they're just going to start going around robbing people, robbing places, uh, making money the easy, fast way. That's how he wants to live his life. So sometime between the time where Henry decided that he was going to live his life as an outlaw and the ending part of 1892, Henry Starr and his gang, they're just riding on horseback around the Indian territories and different parts of Oklahoma, uh, robbing places, robbing people, uh, they're robbing uh, stores, and they're robbing uh, railroad depots. Now, a good take for a robbery that they would do would be eh, maybe $1,500, maybe $2,000 if they were lucky. Uh, but a typical robbery back in those days, you're probably getting about $150, $200 bucks at the max, and you're splitting it between uh, two, three guys. So you're not making really much money you're just wanting to not, you know, work an uh, honest day's uh, job. What the heck is that? Is that an armadillo? Wow. Definitely has seen better days. That is for sure. Anyways. So they're robbing and uh, doing all kinds of crazy nonsense that those kids back in those uh, good old days used to do. So since he had jumped bail, you had a couple of marshals that were on his tail uh, by the name of Henry Dickey and Floyd Wilson. So they're going around the area and uh, they're looking for Henry Starr uh, because he jumped bail and they know and suspect him based on the witnesses description of the bandits as this guy who's going around uh, robbing different businesses and robbing different people. So they go to a ranch uh, that is owned by a man by the name of Arthur Dodge. And they're saying, hey, uh, we're looking for Henry Starr. We're looking for cohorts, cohorts of his gang. And Arthur says, man, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know who he is. Uh, but if I see him, I'll, I'll definitely let you know. I'll definitely give you a holler. That is for sure. So one day... The marshals, they're having dinner, and then Arthur comes in and he says, Hey, uh, somebody told me that somebody told them that they heard from a bird that down the river, somebody whispered that Henry Starr is not very far from here at all. As a matter of fact, uh, he was seen over in that direction uh, maybe about an hour ago. So immediately, the marshals, they jump on their feet and start running for their horses to make tracks to go catch Henry Starr. Now, Wilson jumps on his horse and he proceeds to head on out. However, however, Henry Dickey, his saddle wasn't on his horse. So it would take you a few minutes to get your saddle, strap it on and head out after his partner. So they're riding, riding, riding. But like I said, uh, Wilson is far ahead of Dickey. So Wilson goes up to buy some stream or something like that. Not sure how far it is, but far enough to where he's already seen this dude, Henry Starr, for probably about where that white van is over there. And he yells out, hey, Henry, or whatever he said. He said, I got a warrant for your arrest. And, you know, Henry, you probably look back at him. He's like, yeah, kid. Uh, yeah, sure. So who knows if he ran or what he did. So Henry is just kind of like standing there, turns around. He probably runs. Now, you got uh, Wilson who fires a warning shot. Pow! With his rifle. And it flies right over Henry's head. And I guess he's like running or whatever he's doing. So he rides his horse up to him. He gets off. 
and tries to fire his gun again. For some unknown reason, he misses. So as he's trying to load his gun, his rifle, you know, because you don't got many shots, you don't got many chances, he goes for his gun. And then that's when Henry jumps on him and they start fighting for that pistol. And Henry wins that fight. He grabs the pistol from Wilson and shoots him. Pow, pow, pow. Deputy Marshal Wilson falls to the ground and Henry Starr, with, with that man's own revolver, click, pow, right in his chest, shot him as he was standing over him. Damn, that's some cold lotion. Not only did he kill him, he, he steals his horse and he rides away. Now, by the time Dickie arrives, you know, Wilson is already gravely injured and he ends up, of course, dying. So now you had two marshals that were looking for Henry Starr for, you know, just being a, you know, low level robber. Now he has the title of murderer on his hand. So within a couple blinks of an eye, you just went from mid-level robber to law enforcement killer. What once was a bounty on your head for $100 now it has grown up to about five thousand dollars and in those days there were a lot of poor people and nobody hardly anybody around had that kind of money so you got to think what's going through henry Starr's mind was did he feel remorse did he feel guilty is he nervous i, I mean who knows uh, he was almost caught by a couple of indian police uh, somewhere in the area but luckily, well, luck was on his side that he was able to get away. So later on, uh, he hooks up with a man uh, with the last name of Cheney. So Star and Cheney, they hook up and they're robbing businesses. But they're only making a certain amount of money. And then plus, you know, whoever else they're hanging out with, they got to divide the money. So they're looking for bigger ways to make money. So one of them has an idea. They say, well, hey, why don't we just rob a bank? Now, now robbing a bank, that's definitely taking it up a notch because when you start robbing banks, that means that you're gonna start having the, um, you know, the feds or whatever coming after you even more. So they planned their first bank robbery in Caney, Kansas on March 28, 1893. Now, to rob a bank back in those days, that was uh it was very very brazen that that was something that only the 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 bravest of the brave would uh would possibly do because they would know that if you rob the bank that they're going to come down on you all of the law enforcement in the area they're going to come down on you and they're going to come down on you quick so him and cheney and maybe a, maybe another guy was with them no actually no it was just them two by themselves so they walk into that bank in uh, Caney and Star has everybody at gunpoint. Cheney goes into the vault, gets his sack and just starts filling it up with money. After he fills it up with money, they grab everybody that was in the bank and lock them in the vault. <laughs> and then they just proceed to get on their horses and they ride out and they made off with about $6,000. So they split it $3,000 each. Uh, I'm not sure back in those days how much $3,000 last you, but uh, they got plenty of time to take a break from their bank robbery until they start getting low on money and then the next robbery ensues. So Cheney and Star, uh, they're robbing more banks, more train depots, just more businesses. And they collect a couple of other guys along the way to add to their gang. So now you you got Cheney, you got Star, and the three other associates. They plan on going to Bentonville, Arkansas, and robbing a bank there. Now I don't know why they chose that particular bank. I don't know if they thought that there was going to be some kind of a major haul or what have you. So they go into the bank in Bentonville, Arkansas, and they say, "Hands up, everybody, don't move." 
We're taking everything that you have in this bank. Now, one of the guys that was with them was another outlaw by the name of Kid Wilson. So they steal all the money and they get away. They go, you know, to where their hideout to go count the money. And it was only $11,000. Now, that would have been a pretty good payday if it was just two people. But you got five guys. So you're splitting up $11,000 five ways. So everybody gets a little bit more uh, than $2,000. Probably get about 2,300 bucks or whatever how you do the math. Maybe somebody gets paid more than somebody else for doing some more work in this robbery. Whatever the case might be. So after such a brazen robbery where so much money was taken, man, the heat is on. Like that song says, the heat is on. So the gang, you know, they're looking at, you know, they're like, okay, you know, we made some money, but this ain't really worth it. And now we got a bunch of heat. And plus this Henry Starr guy, he has a murder on his head and they're coming after him to shoot to kill. So they're going to probably kill us too. So certain members of the gang, they decide to split up. So the other three guys, they go their own way. And Kid Wilson and Henry Starr, they decide, let's lay low. Let's take a train out to California. So them and this chick, I don't know if she was just a girlfriend of somebody or she was just one of those, uh, I don't know, chicks is just like bad guys. So they all hop a train and they start heading out to California. So the train stops uh, in Colorado Springs. And by that time, they're hanging loose in Colorado Springs. Maybe they're doing a little bit of sightseeing. Uh, maybe they just got off the train and they just decided to stay there. I don't know. But they never made it to California. And on a po postcard that uh, Henry Starr sent to somebody back in Oklahoma, uh, he said, hey, I'm in Colorado Springs. <laughs> I'm loving it. This, is, this place is great. So that person stabbed him in the back, calls the, uh, the the deputy sheriffs and says, hey, I got a postcard from Henry Starr. He says he's in Colorado Springs. Is there a reward for this? Am I gonna make any money for snitching? For being a low down snitch? Well, I don't know if they gave him any money, but they contacted authorities over in Colorado and immediately the uh, hotel where they registered into or checked into uh, was found. Now they had checked under uh, assumed names, but uh, their picture uh, was shown and or their sketch or whatever they had back in those days probably pictures and uh, The hotel staff they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who those are. Yeah, they're checked in but that's not their names and, and they're with this girl uh, She's kind of pretty girl or whatever. So they waited for these guys and then they promptly Arrested them. Okay, so now you're going to jail guys. Cool. Cool. Cool So they get arrested and Oklahoma wants to have a word with Mr. Henry Starr. So he's brought back to Oklahoma to face uh, the murder uh, of uh, Deputy uh, Wilson. And also the, the bank robbery, I believe it possibly the one in Caney. Also, they want to talk to him about all the other robberies. Now, don't ask me why this is a part of the story where it gets very, very, very weird. So Henry's in jail in Fort Smith, Arkansas, right? And uh, there's a friend of his that he knows from his wild and crazy days. His name is uh, Cherokee Bill. For some unknown reason, a trustee or somebody smuggled a gun into the jail. So Cherokee Bill says oh hey guys i got a gun and they're like oh crap so he takes a couple of guards hostage they get into a shootout he ends up killing one of the uh, guards and now he's holding a guard uh, hostage and he's held up in a cell so henry Starr says listen 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 uh i might be able to get the gun away from him uh how about we do this uh i'll get the gun and if if you promise not to kill him and me um, I think I can end this. So they say, okay. So Henry Starr walks into you know, the cell with Cherokee Bill, talks to him and says, hey man, this isn't worth it. You know, you, 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 you already killed one man. Let's not have any more killing. And he actually gets Cherokee Bill to give him the gun. So Henry is now a, a, a hero in a sense, right? 
And uh, he goes to trial. Now, his first trial ends uh, in a mistrial. Uh, his lawyers were pretty good, I guess. Um, I don't know if maybe they say that they don't have proof that he actually killed the deputy because technically there was no uh, witness to the shooting. Technically, nobody shot him. They don't have a murder weapon. So the second trial also ends in a hung jury. The third trial ends, he's convicted, but of manslaughter. So he's given with the manslaughter and the robbing, the robbing of the bank and the other several smaller robberies, he's given a sentence of 15 years in prison. So he does his time in prison and he gets pardoned by President Theodore Roosevelt because Theodore Roosevelt heard about his heroic deed in jail. So he gave him a, a, a presidential pardon, if you will. So he gets out of prison and he's like, okay, cool. Well, back to old tricks again. So this guy keeps his nose clean for a while. He goes back to Tulsa. He's working for his mom who has a pretty successful restaurant over there. And he meets this girl and he has a, a, a little boy. And guess what he names the boy? He names him Theodore Roosevelt Starr after the president who pardoned him. Ah, but, you know, you, you just can't. You just can't, uh, you know, get away from old tricks. So Henry Starr would try to stay out of prison, but he would just keep continuously robbing banks. Uh, he would later uh, get caught again robbing a bank. Uh, he would plead guilty to, to that. Uh, he would have gotten sentenced to 25 years for a bank robbery that he committed, which was one of his final robberies in Amity, Colorado. He gets 25 years, but for some unknown reason, they give him parole. He gets out in 1919. And you would think that after Hollywood hiring him to do like a quick little silent movie about a bank robbery, he starts getting offers from Hollywood, but he doesn't want to do that. He just wants to be a bank robber. And the last bank that he would rob that would end in his death uh, was uh, in Stroud, Oklahoma. So he goes to Stroud, Oklahoma on uh, March 27th uh, and he just goes ahead and robs the bank. And I guess the uh, man that was there, there was a man that was there. He sees this guy robbing the bank. I believe he was the former president of the bank. And he says, forget this and he t pulls out his gun and as uh, Henry Starr has his back towards him uh, he shoots him right in the back right in the freaking back actually I got that date wrong that wasn't March 27th no he robbed that bank February 18th of 1921 uh, he would die three days later on February 21st 19. 21 at the age of 47. Uh, this guy, he claimed that he robbed more banks than uh, the Dalton gang and the Younger gang uh, combined. I don't know if that's true or not because who knows how many banks they actually robbed. Uh, but it is, it is estimated that the bank robberies that he was, uh, you know, attributed to or that were attributed to him was about 21 banks and in total uh, he netted about uh, I want to say they're, they're guessing $60,000 so not a whole lot of money but uh, you're probably wondering why I said he's the first trans bank robber well he was he's known as the first bank robber to transition from robbing banks on horseback to robbing banks with a car huh but you were kind of wondering, you are waiting for that. You thought he was going to dress up like a girl and rob a bank, huh? No. No, not this guy. <sighs> Anyways, enough about that. Uh, we are walking onto the grave of the final resting place of Henry Starr. And I guess I was wrong again because he didn't die February 21st. He died February 22nd, 1921.
Right there, guys. Right there. All right. The Cherokee Batman. I've robbed more banks than any man in America. Eh, maybe. And uh, this right here says Baby Star. So I don't know who that is. That's not Theodore Roosevelt Star because uh, he, uh, Theodore Roosevelt Star, uh, was by his father's side when he died. Okay, guys. This, uh, this video went on a little longer than I thought. Sorry. But uh, I started babbling and, uh, yeah, I just started babbling. <sighs> okay, guys. I am, I am out of here. Henry Star. Hey, it's kind of like a Hollywood Walk of Fame star thing. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, anyways, I am out of here. I got to go. I am still looking for a trailer to live in. It has been an absolute nightmare. Hopefully, I'll find something this week. I'll catch up with y'all later. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.